برای توی کوچه رخ سیدن برای ترسیدن به وقت بوسیدن برای خواهرم خواهرت خواهرامون برای تغییر مغز ها که پوسیدن برای شمد برای برای the young Iranian musician Shervin Hajipur It became the anthem for the anti-government protests, which have swept the country since September last year, after Masa Amini, a young woman, died in police custody. Well, tonight in Los Angeles, the song is up for a Grammy, uh, for a new award, Best Song for Social Change, and it is the favourite to win. Shervin was arrested just a few days after Baray went viral and the song was taken down from Instagram. He's since been granted bail, but the message from the authorities seems clear. The song's lyrics, made up of raw and impassioned social media posts by supporters of the protests, were themselves a powerful challenge to the establishment. I've been talking to the prominent Iranian musician Ali Azimi, one of the pioneers of the country's alternative music scene. He's now based in London, and he's been telling me more about the song. The genre of the music probably would be R&B or soul, and also it's a bit singer-songwritery. I think it's a type of music that younger generation of Iranians relate to uh, in that sense. Yes, and the music is accessible. Tell us about the lyrics and, and where the words come from. When you first hear this song, it seems like a very simple song. The lyrics are very simple. Even the video clip that he recorded in his, in his room or studio had this uh, sheer simplicity that related to many people. And that was, I think, one of the reasons that it became uh, such a big hit. The lyrics of this song has been taken from thousands of tweets uh, which were tweeted by Iranians at the time of this uprising. And they were kind of uh, reflecting their hopes and dreams and their frustration and grievances. Some of these lines were simple, normal parts of life, but the very things which are not allowed under the uh, Islamic revolution, like dancing the street, or fearing to kiss the loved ones in the public, برای توی کوچه رخ سیدن برای ترسیدن به وقت بوسیدن برای خواهرم خواهرت خواهرامون برای تن The power of these words were the simplicity and the sheer fact that these simple kind of rights that everybody in the world have is like it's been taken away from us He was so genius, uh, Sherwin that he took these tweets and created the lyrics of his song for his song and became suddenly became so popular and became a hit in such a short amount of time, it reached 40 million only on his own uh, Instagram page. And then, obviously, it went so much further than that. Yes, just give us a sense of the impact. I mean, it seems to have really struck a chord and touched people, doesn't it? Absolutely. It became a song of the, uh, the anthem for the revolution. And I think the reason for the success was that this general feeling of frustration and anger that everybody had towards this brutal suppression of the uprising and the killings and the fact that people were just simply asking for very simple rights, like wearing what they want to wear, saying what they want to say. And um, and as you say, it, it exploded in popularity, went viral very, very quickly. But when it did, he was then arrested. What impact did that have on the song? Did that just increase its popularity, its resonance even more? Yeah, absolutely. When the song was released, we were on tour. And uh, on the day of his uh, arrest, it exploded, really. And people were even more angry and more eager to know what this song is. And on the same day, actually, we had a show in Helsinki. We decided to start the show with his clip. And to our uh, astonishment, everybody in the audience knew the lyrics. And they were singing along. And it was such a beautiful moment. How did you manage to write about social issues, political issues, when you were still back in Tehran? How difficult was that? I started my career only like 15 years ago. At the time, actually, I was living in London. I went back to Tehran to form a band called Radio Tehran. So when we started recording, we were started thinking about releasing the album. The sense was that we were not going to even bother to go through the Ministry of Culture, to be honest with you. So I never recognized this ministry as somewhere that I could go to and get my permit to release my song. I never kind of cared about that. 
obviously we were underground. We were always a band which was not recognized officially. So it was an element of fear, element of risk. But this is something as an artist that you have to kind of endure as part of your existence. Uh, And so to that extent, despite the government's repression, its attempts to restrict people's ability to create and speak, there is, I guess, a, a flourishing music scene. That creativity is still able to make itself heard. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's, this uh, music scene is growing and it's becoming more deep and beautiful. We are hearing a lot of interesting songs and pieces in various genres, from rap music to rock and, and so on and so on. We have a lot of rappers which are creating amazing uh, work right now and um, post-revolution, basically, if you want to call it a revolution. So the music scene is very vibrant right now. And yet, you know, you find it easier now to work outside Iran. Was that a conscious decision that you couldn't do what you wanted to do inside the country? Absolutely. It was a dead end. And it, it is a dead end for many, many creatives. It's very unfortunate that people have to migrate to follow their dreams because ultimately your audience is inside that country over 80 million people are inside that country and you for a musician like me for example you're cut off from your main source of income you have to go around uh, traveling the cities where iranians are for example like this is what we do we we tour in certain cities where we think there might be a market and it's very difficult and also you know platforms like uh, spotify or youtube they're filtered in iran so your, even your royalty that you might be expecting as a you know, normal musician is reduced. The majority of it is basically cut off. So it's a very, very tricky situation to exist as a musician or as an artist. And what will it mean if uh, Shervin Hajipur's song does win the award at the Grammys? What do you think the significance of, uh, of that will be? I guess it'll give it, for a start, a, a much bigger audience. Absolutely. I mean, he's done a phenomenal job. He's written a song that became an anthem. And he's already a winner. I don't really care if he wins or not. But adding this award to the Grammys, I think it's, it's a very wise move by the uh, organizers. It will have a significant global impact on the mind of musicians. And the timing of it is just perfect for Iran and for Sherwin. I really hope for Iranians that Sherwin wins this award because it will further reflect our frustration and our cry to be heard in the uh, global society. Ali Azimi, Iranian musician, talking to me about Barai by Shervin Hajipur, up for a Grammy this evening. You've been listening to News Hour. Thanks for being with us. Bye bye. <laughs>